Hello, 21st Century Educators. Welcome to our first live for 2022. We are very excited to have all of you here with us. We will be starting promptly at five as we have a discussion which is really needed in our education system now. We will be talking about active learning and we'll be looking specifically at art and craft. And we will have with us a very special guest, Camille Wooding, who is the owner of DIY Place. She is an educator, she is an author, she is a businesswoman. I mean, she really has a lot to share with us today. And so we will be starting promptly at five. So make sure to remind your friends, make sure to give them a little WhatsApp reminder and tell them to come on. This session is, is relevant for our preschool teachers, for our primary school educators, secondary school educators, and of course, parents. So we will be starting promptly at five as we join with Camille Wooding, who is going to lead our session today. So we will be going to start very quickly. All right. So in the meantime, as usual, tell us where you're viewing us from, if you are from Trinidad and Tobago, if you are from other parts of the Caribbean, if you are from the US, the UK, please let us know where you're viewing us from and give us some information. Tell us if you are in preschool education, primary school, secondary school, if your parents just interested in finding out more about active learning, do leave us a comment and tell us where you are from. So we have one minute before we start. So we are going to just ask Camille to come on now as she gets ready and she can say hi to you all. Hi everyone. Right, so this is Camille and Camille will be starting with you all very shortly. So in one minute time we are going to start our session and so we want to remind all of you to make sure if you have questions, comments, of course, as usual, you leave it in the chat. And remember, today is about active learning, so therefore you will have something to do. All right, so it's now five o'clock. We'd like to officially welcome you to 21st Century Educators, our first webinar for 2022. And we are very excited to have Camille Wooding here with us from DIY Place. Be sure to check them out on Facebook and Instagram. And I believe you all are also on uh, Planting Seeds as well. Yes, Planting Seeds so, Caribbean. And Camila is going to tell you a lot more. So we have lots in store and we want to get started right away. So I will be disappearing a little bit. And remember to tell us where you are from. And if you have any questions or comments, also leave them in the chat and we will get to it. So I'll see you all at the end of the session. So Camille, over to you. Thank you so much, Leanne. I'm so very, very happy to be here with you all today. I've, you know, this, this, uh, this project is really a passion that I have to see education taking place differently because you know, we really need to have our children in a place where they can thrive. Uh, I would say 10, 20 years from now, you know, it's a different world from them, for them. So I'm just gonna get started with my presentation. Just a little bit about DIY Place. Uh, DIY Place is a unique creative educational organization based in Trinidad and Tobago. And we are focused on building creative and innovative capability uh, through training, educa education sector support, public awareness initiatives, and resource development. And one of the key highlights of, um, of this part of our work is really the book on art and craft for elementary school, which I will show you all in a little while, but it is a book that I wrote uh, to really support use of art and craft in schools and primary schools in particular. This is volume one, so I'm working on volume two at the moment. A little bit about me, as Leanne would have mentioned earlier, I'm an author, an educator. I also am an experienced business consultant. In fact, uh, this year would be 20 years since I'm consulting. 
I'm also a lecturer, digital content creator, and a crafter. Okay, so let's get into it. Let me give you an idea of the agenda for today. Uh, it's going to take place in two parts. One would be really talking about art and craft and curriculum. And while it's a presentation, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and uh, Leanne would let me know, you know, any questions that you have. So I, I am willing to stop and answer your questions. Feel free to do that. You know, I really prefer an interactive session. So I don't mind uh, answering your questions when you have them. Um, looking forward to any questions, any comments that you have. And the second part of the agenda is really about doing a little workshop because, you know, we have to have a little fun, right? Um, just a reminder that there is a price of participation and I will give you the link to a Google form that you can fill out um, at the end of the workshop. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to talk about art and craft and curriculum. And I'm really going to start with the curriculum part of it. Okay, because we need to kind of set um, a base from which we need to start. The first question I'm going to ask you is, when you talk about education, what are we really trying to accomplish? You know, in my mind, and you might think differently, so I'm really looking forward to what you have to say, but in my mind, we are trying to make sure that our children can grow up, can become productive members of society, can be in a place where they can take care of themselves, take care of their families, um, and, you know, just basically contribute to a better society. For those of you who live in Trinidad and Tobago, to a better Trinidad and Tobago. To those of you all who live elsewhere, to a better wherever else you are. You know, that people can really um, find that space. And that's what education is for. That's what education is about, in my mind. Okay. For those of you all who are either parents of young children, teachers of, you know, second primary and early childhood um, ed children and those, you know, grandparents, you may have a few grandparents with us. The thing we need to note is that our real success is not measured now. Our real success is not measured based on if your child passes a test. You know, that is success, yes it is, but our real success is really measured nearly 20 years from now. When the child is 25 or, you know, 29 or 30, that's when you really know whether your education has been a success. You know, you have, you have young people who are doing very well in school. All the way up to university, they get in first class honors, they go in and get PhDs, you know, come out of getting a PhD at 25, 26 now, um, but not necessarily successful, you know, and it's, it's, it's really distressing. It's distressing for us and it's distressing for them because they followed all the rules. And part of the reason for that is because we have to recognize that the world we live in now is very different from the one that we grew up in. We know that if we look back at say 1990, um, you know, 1990, the internet existed, but we really weren't involved in it. You know, computers were around, but everybody didn't have one. And certainly, you know, nobody knew what a smartphone was. A few people might have had these clunky things called cell phones, but really it was not something that everybody had. And so if you look at our lives now, it's very different. And therefore we can, we, while we don't know what the future holds, we can look at our trajectory and we can see that 20 years from now, we really can't imagine everything that life is going to be like 20 years from now. What we can do is we can say it's going to be different. And what we need to do is make sure that our children are ready to live in that world that we don't know, but we know is going to be different. Now we do know a few things, we, you know, based on what we've seen so far, we know a few things. One of the key things we know is that our children are very visual. They have devices in front of them all the time um, and they love the devices. So they want to have devices all of the time. And that means that they are constantly being bombarded with visuals, videos, pictures, you know, that kind of thing. And so they've learned 
to be more visual than say maybe we were when we were younger. Um, for those of you all who grew up in Trinidad and Tobago, some of you all might remember when um, television signed on and signed off and there was only one real channel you know it was it said two and 13 but 13 was the big they showed the same thing so we only had one channel and certain times of the day there was no television imagine that you know now you have i don't know how many hundred on cable so you know our children are accustomed to stimulation and so when we are teaching we need to bear that in mind we can't teach our children the way that we were taught 20 years ago. And I know some of you all say, well, it worked for me, so it should work for them. Well, no, because the environment that they're growing up in is very different. So let's go forward a little bit. I'm going to take some information from the National Early Childhood Curriculum Guide. I'm using Trinidad and Tobago. This is from Trinidad and Tobago. You could go online and I'll give you the link shortly. Um, but it applies to everybody. Also, it is early childhood curriculum, but the concept of education in it is the same for everybody. In fact, it's the same for adults. Okay, if you look at the concepts in the education here, you will see that um, it applies to everybody. So one of the, the four pillars that are mentioned there in the curriculum guide, learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together and learning to be. Notice that there are four pillars, not one. It's not just learning to know. There are four pillars. And I know that, you know, parents are very much aware of that. The curriculum goes on to say, and here's a link here, Ministry of Education and so on. Um, the curriculum goes on to talk about seven principles for quality curriculum. And these are the seven principles, holistic learning and development, active learning, interactive learning, integrated learning, learning through play. So it should be through and not thought. Typo. Partnership or relationship for learning and authentic assessment. Okay. And it goes on to talk about development or educational programs through language, physical, cognitive and reasoning, creative, social, emotional and academic readiness. So bearing that in mind, we took out some of those development educational programs to ex you know, explain it a bit further. Physical development of fine motor, skills you have older children being exposed to building and construction art and writing manipulation and of course you have gross motor development activities running and so on okay another one would be cognitive and cognitive development and reasoning right being able to actively guide children in a variety of reasoning activities including sorting and classifying noticing similarities and differences noticing shapes and colors linking cause and effect that linking cause and effect is very interesting because that is actually something i teach about in my graduate class okay so when i tell you that it's not just about young children it really is uh, verbal children are encouraged to talk through explain problem solving skills but let me tell you that is also something we do in graduate teaching okay creative development having specific creative development activities in your program and having teachers actively guide children in a variety of activities including art craft and sensory activities dramatic play music and dance actively encourage self-expression such as children making their own music creating songs or creating their own art and craft displays under socio-emotional development, you have specific, specific socio-emotional activities in the daily programs. And then you have teachers actively providing opportunities to be taught personal values, such as fairness, honesty, respect for books, drama, storytelling, and other developmentally appropriate methods. Promotion of cooperative and pro-social behaviors. 
I'm going to tie all of this in just now, okay? All of that, how, how are we going to do all of that? How are we going to do, let me go back. So, so emotional, creative, cognitive, and physical, of, specifically with fine motor skills. We do it through play, positive learning activities for youngsters. Or one aspect of play is art and craft, okay? Or activity-based learning, which involves art and craft, okay? And play can help develop language, your physical, cognitive and reasoning, creative and social and e emotional development. Play is linked to all of those things. Now, play is not just art and craft, but art and craft is part of play, okay? And what I found is that a lot of teachers in particular shy away from art and craft for a number of reasons. In some cases, it's because they figure they don't have time for it. They have so much to do. It's very difficult. They don't have time to do all of that. In some cases, they are not comfortable teaching art and craft because they themselves were not taught um, in schools. You know, they might have been taught during their teaching program, but they saw it as, you know, let me just pass this, but it wasn't something that was ingrained in them. I was fortunate to have, you know, a couple art and craft classes in school. So it's important to understand that while this art and craft and play is important to children, we can see that and we can see all the aspects that it can develop in them, it's not being done, you know? And that was one of the reasons why I wrote this book, to really give teachers a resource to make life easy for them. Everything is in the book with pictures and directions. And on top of that, all of these projects are on YouTube. So you don't even have to pay anything if you don't even want to buy the book. You could literally go on YouTube and get everything free. And all of our videos are within five minutes. So it will be very easy, especially now with online, to send a link and say, look at this and let's do this together. Okay. So promoting play can be both structured and unstructured. Structured meaning you have an end in mind and you say, okay, we're going to make this. So we're going to make a butterfly. We're going to make a airplane or whatever it is you're going to make. Um, unstructured is when you give them vague instructions, you give them access to materials and you see what they come up with, you know, where the imagination takes them and, you know, what they want to make. Another point I want to make, because I know the VAC system is very popular and, and you know, it, it's a good thing um, to look at, is that art and craft does include VAC. It is visual, it is auditory, right? It is kinesthetic, it is read write. it has all of those things involved in it. And also art and craft inspires creativity. And I spoke earlier about the world that our kids are going to go into 20 years from now. Well, one thing we do know is that creative and innovative um, qualities are things that right now, right now, employers are looking for. Employers are looking for employees who are creative, who can think and do innovative things, um, and who can really be flexible about what they're about because they, the employers know the world is changing and they need employees who are willing to change with the world with them, okay? I'm gonna put this up. I know most of y'all, probably all of y'all have seen it, but it's always a good reminder. Um, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Right, And that is very important to understand the differences in our children and why sometimes we need to have these various methods to reach them. So I'm just going to now, Leon, if there are any questions or anything, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm going to now talk about a sample connection between art and craft and curriculum. Okay, I'm just going to give you all an idea of um, how to, you know, how to work it. So, for example, if you were teaching 
about bees and the importance of bees to the ecosystem, or you were teaching about pollinators and so on, then you can use, you know, a bee puppet. And what that is gonna do as a little child has the puppet in her hand or his hand and, you know, teaching about bees, it comes alive. You know, you say, here's a little puppet. The puppet name is, I don't know, Wendy or whatever. And, you know, it makes life so much easier. On top of that, it helps to develop the fine motor skills, as we mentioned earlier. And we actually have a poster that we did on bees and the importance of bees um, to the ecology. So teaching on one thing, can you can use it in a variety of ways. I'm going to show you some more. I'm going to give you some ideas. But what I want you to do is to feedback. And we're going to have a feedback session at the very end. Uh, but I want you to feedback to me as to what you think that craft can be used for, what it can be used to teach. Okay. Another one is a nameplate. Simple thing, a nameplate. Um, but you use it to teach who am I? Might be a good way to start a new class. It may be a good way also to develop fine motor skills. But there may be some other ideas that you have that you could use a nameplate for. And when Leanne and I spoke, there were many ideas coming up. I don't want to put them all here because I want you all to tell me how you can use this in your classroom to teach on some aspect of curriculum. Here's one that I really like. It's called a ninja star and it's basically a star with some yarn wrapped around it. Um, but, and so it's a toy, the, the kids use it to you know, throw it and, and play with it. Um, so obviously it's a star, we're teaching shapes, you can teach angles. Uh, you could also use it to teach on stars and ast astronomy. Um, you could use it to build self-confidence. You know, I am a star. It continues to develop fine motor skills, but it also teaches the children that learning can be fun because learning has to be fun. I think, you know, I really enjoy learning because learning is fun to me. I read a lot. And I think that, you know, that is a good habit to have, to think that learning is fun because that's the other thing about the world that our kids are going to. They have to be continuously learning because things are changing so quickly. They will have to learn a lot all the time. And we also do have a post on stars and astronomy that you can access. Our next example, I hope I'm not going too fast. Eh? Leanne, if I'm going too fast, you let me know. Our next example is a little airplane made out of popsicle sticks and a clothespin. And I have to tell you that this little airplane is very popular everywhere we have been. Everyone, including adults, including adults, have really enjoyed making this little plane. I can't tell you how popular it is and how much fun it is to make. It's very simple, but it's really one of those little projects that, you know, everybody just loves making. Um, it could also be a group project. This is one of those things you could do as a group project. You could encourage teamwork and collaboration. So you could have maybe two or three people working together on this. Um, again, it develops fine motor skills. It encourages creativity. And one of the things that we recommend, for example, is to use it as a prop. If you have to teach social studies, you want to talk, for example, about countries, Caribbean countries, for example, then you take your little plane and say, let's hop over to Barbados. And you know, you talk about Barbados. So let's hop over to Guyana and you talk about Guyana and so on. Um, you, and one of the things we have done is to develop an infographic for each Caribbean country. Sorry, people who are not from the Caribbean, but if you want to learn about the Caribbean, go check our infographic. All our information, the infographics are on Pinterest and I will put the link in the last slide for you. Okay, it's the DIY place. So if you're looking for it, that's where you'll find it. Uh, but you know, it just makes everything come alive when it's a visual and not just black and white reading. And wouldn't it be so nice to have a little video to go with that about each country, you know, welcome to um, St. Lucia and this is what we have and that sort of thing. All right, let's, let's move along because I do want to leave that space for the Q&A at the end. 
All I right. commute. Yeah. Just adding some feedback. Um, mm -hmm. So Marsha says that the star can be used as a connection in teaching 2D shapes, polygons, um, angles, symmetry. And Kizzy, um, for the plane, she said it's a nice idea when teaching modes of transport in Spanish as well. So nice. nice. Idea. Um, and of course, we just want to recognize we have persons from Trinidad and Tobago. We also have people from Pakistan. And please remember, and we have some teachers who are science communicators, primary school, secondary. Um, so, go ahead. So we have, we have some scientists among us. Very good. I love scientists. I love science. Okay, so here are some other samples that we have of crafts from the book. As I said, we have about 50, I think it's 52, 51 or 52 crafts in the book. Um, the microphone. I don't know what it is about this microphone, but all I can say is the kids absolutely love this microphone. They really think it's a real microphone. All right. And, you know, it allows them to express themselves. If this little thing here, they put it and somehow they feel it on a stage. And you can really see how the kid expresses him or herself. You can see aspects of their personality come out. Um, the little uh, butterfly um, bookmark, which is very cute, but it's also a very quick craft. Okay, because sometimes you want something that's kind of fast, you know? Um, and then of course the butterfly itself. And again, the butterfly, we will do the caterpillar shortly as part of our workshop. Um, but the butterfly is, you teach that as part of metamorphosis, part of pollination. And I'm going to leave you all again to give me all the ideas because again, Leanne and I came up with about 10 different ideas on the butterfly, okay? We have the airplane and here is the caterpillar that we're going to make today, okay? So what I'm going to do now, so we're going very well on time. I probably speed it a little bit, but I wanted to do that. I wanted to allow some time at the end for some feedback and some, you know, um, communication from you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into the workshop. I'm going to be going to make the caterpillar together just to show you how easy it is. Now, let me just say that the YouTube for the caterpillar is on YouTube. It is there, so if you miss anything besides looking back at this, you could also go to that and you will see it. Um, but it's probably a little shorter because we try to make them as short as possible. Okay, so this is a link to the YouTube here. When you go to youtube.com backslash C backslash DIY place. And on Pinterest, it's www.pinterest.com backslash the DIY place backslash. Okay, so that is how you will get to, and when you go into Pinterest, you will see all of our boards and you can choose the boards with, with resources. And that would be the one where you'll find all of our posters. Okay, and of course you can always uh, go on our Facebook page and send us a message on, 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 on through Messenger and we always get those messages. So if you need to contact us, that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. All right, let's do our little caterpillar. I hope you're all excited. I hope you all, some of you all have your paper. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to show you visually what we're going to do. And then I'm actually going to show you, do it with you on the video on the side. Okay, so what we're going to need is we really need two sheets of paper, colored paper. Okay, just two sheets and we will cut it. Um, scissors, glue, and a black marker or a pen, okay? And then we are going to basically fold our papers into each other, sorry. We're going to fold our papers into each other and create, oh, and we need two eyes as well. Did I not mention the eyes? Yes. Okay, so let us go ahead and make our craft. I'm going to put it, um, let me leave it on the, on the picture of the caterpillar, okay? And I hope everybody is with me. All right, so basically you need two sheets of 
what I'd call copy size paper, okay? Now two sheets of paper are going to make two caterpillars, okay? Not one. What we're going to do, we're going to take a sheet and we're going to measure, so you need your ruler. See if y'all can see that. I'm going to use a Sharpie so y'all can see what I'm doing, but you could use a pencil, okay? You're going to measure two inches, okay? I usually just do the whole sheet simply because again, we just make two with it. So you measure two inches. And so you're going to cut two inches, okay? So you're going to use that to draw your two inch lines. Camille? Yes? If you could stop sharing the PowerPoint so we could focus on the craft. Oh, okay, yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, so we're measuring two inches, okay? On our two sheets of paper, And we're going to cut those pieces of paper. You're going to measure it on the other piece of paper you have as well. And then we're going to cut those lines. Okay. So if you're dealing with very small children, you may cut this in advance for them, but some of them has, have those tiny scissors. And this is a good way to help them develop their fine motor skills because they're gonna to have to cut a straight line, okay? So we're gonna cut our first and second sheet of paper. So this is our first sheet. Maybe they can tell us if anybody's actually doing it, if anybody's following and actually making the caterpillar, I'd be interested to know. Yes, we do have people who are making this. Some of them didn't have the eyes, but. That's okay, we can draw it in. We can draw it in. All right, I'm going with two again. And again, as I say, you can use a pencil. I'm just using the marker so y'all can see on the screen what, um, what is taking place. So I'm measuring again my five. Now this sheet of paper, I really did cut a piece already. So it's a little less than the size, the full size, but you get the gist. Okay, so we're gonna cut our, well, that was yellow and now this is green. All right. can use any colors. And let me just say something. Um, you don't have to use, if you don't have colored paper, use anything. You know, some of you, your kids might have done a scrapbook in, in school with something and they use 10 out of the 20 pages. Take the other 10 pages and use it to, um, to make stuff with, you know, or you may have, you know, magazines or something lying around that instead of throwing it out, you can use it junk mail you can actually use junk mail um you can use white paper if that's all you have white paper then take the paper get a marker this is my son's markers from when he was i don't know in primary school so i'm praying that they work um get a marker with a white sheet of paper and then you know let them put some kind of pattern on it you know, so then you're teaching patterns, which is another thing that we want to teach, right? But whatever, whatever, um, you know, whatever you want to come up with, you know? I'm just drawing some random things here. As you all can see, I'm not very good at drawing. <laughs> I'm a crafter who don't know how to draw. Okay. 
And if it were white paper, you know, they could color. So this could be part of the little activity where they, you know, color it in and make something fancy. So this part is not in the video because like I said, the video had to be very short. Um, so it's not on the YouTube, I should say. But, you know, you always could vary things according to however. I'm doing this to give those people who are still cutting a little chance to catch up, right? That's why, <laughs> okay, yellow and green isn't working. So what color should we try? I wonder if the pink might work. Let's try pink and see if it will work. Okay, maybe not working. Orange. All right, the orange is working very nicely. All right. And y'all can see I'm not any great artist here. I'm just doing doodles of all kinds and shapes. Um, but when it when it comes together, it's just going to look very, very nice. All right. So you don't have to be an artist. As a teacher, you don't have to be the artist. Um, you know, just encourage the kids to do what they can do. All right, because I have green paper, it, it, some of it didn't show up. I'm just, again, I'm just staying a little bit to give some people an opportunity to catch up, okay? So that's, y'all can enjoy my doodling while I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm sure some of your kids will really enjoy the doodling part, right? No rhyme or reason, to be honest. Y'all can tell I used to like the doodle in school, right? While the teacher was talking. That's what I was doing. Right. Okay, so enough doodling. Hopefully everybody is caught up with uh, measuring and cutting by now. So let's get on to making our caterpillar. So you're going to need three pieces of one color and two pieces of the other, which is why I said two sheets of paper will get you two caterpillars, okay? So three of one and two of the other, and then you're going to, um, you're going to kind of put, put it according to the, um, whatever pattern you want to, to do it in, okay? Now I wish I had all in doodles, but anyway, we've put the doodles in the middle, okay? So I put green, yellow, green, yellow, green, okay? That means I am choosing green as the face of my caterpillar, okay? I'm going to use that for the face. Um, and it's very simple. Y'all have done this already many times. This is what we do to make garlands sometimes for like birthdays and so on. I'm just gonna use my little bottle of glue. You can use craft glue, you can use glue stick, anything will really stick paper to be honest. We're just gonna put a little bit of glue at the end for the first one and get it to stick together. Okay, now we're gonna stick the second one through that. Okay, so you've made a loop and now we're gonna loop our second one through that first one. So this paper is easy, right? Loop the second one through the first one and stick it. Okay. So now we have the third one, we're gonna loop that through and stick it, y'all with me? Those of y'all who are doing, I want to see your pictures, huh? We're doing, we're doing assessment. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody's doing an assessment. I just want to see, <laughs> no assessments. All right, we're gonna loop again. All right, and every time we loop, we stick. Now you could make this longer, you can make it, you can make it larger, but if you make it larger, you kind of have to stick with the 
um, dimension. So if you make it large, wider, you have to make it longer for it to loop through, okay? And then our final piece. How are we going on time? Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, so we're going to stick this up here. Right, and we just need to decide which is the front and which is the back. Doesn't matter. I think I like, I think I like this side as the front. So then I have these doodles facing that way. So I'm going to go with this as the front. Okay. And what we need for the front are two eyes. If you don't have the eyes, just use your marker and draw an eye. Okay. Sorry, I had a little pack from something and oh, look, it has these little decorations on it. Maybe I'll use those as well. Dress up my, dress up my caterpillar. Okay, so we have two eyes and we need two antennae, okay? So we have to decide what color we're gonna put the antennae. We can put it in the same green, we can put it in the yellow, we could put it in a totally different color. It's nice if your antennae is in a thicker board, right? Because it, it tends to move, but you can use the same paper. I'm going to use the yellow, but what I'm going to do, because it's kind of thin, okay? I'm going to double it up and stick it. So I'm going to get it to be a little bit more stiff, a little bit thicker, okay? So it's doubled up and now I'm going to apply glue right through so that if I can stick these two pieces together. This will actually give me my two Anthony. Okay. Cut that in half. And that's it. So here we go. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the eyes. Now, some of you all might just have markers and some of you all might have sticky eyes. I don't think these are sticky eyes, so I have to apply glue. I don't apply glue to the eye because that's, you know, a lot of work to try and get it. So what I do, I apply the glue. Can you all see that? Yes. I apply the glue to the caterpillar itself. And then I place the eye. So much easier. Okay. Oh gosh, look at cutie. Look cutie already. <laughs> Okay, so for these, Anthony, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a little turn. All right, make sure they're even. Give them a little turn at the bottom, or the, well, this would end up being the bottom. Okay. So you're going to bend it like that. And so we're going to be able to apply it like this okay can you see that it's it's a little crisscross on that side and it's going like that so let me this time i'm going to apply the glue here so it's going to go they're going to crisscross each other a little bit okay and we have our two antennae up there. And what I'm going to do, because I found those little decorations, you know, I like thing. I'm going to put those little square things I found right there. Say so cute. Right. And that is it. That is it. We have our, I'm trying to turn it so you all can see, really see the top here. Okay. We have our little caterpillar. I don't know, what's his name? I think I'll name him Norman. <laughs> Norman. Okay, and the last thing you want to do is just put 
a little mouth on him. Okay, so Norman is smiling because Norman is happy because Norman is going to turn into a butterfly just now. All right, wasn't that fun? I hope some of y'all had fun with that or at least had fun looking at me doing it. You know, it, 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 it doesn't matter. So I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna go back to the share screen for a moment, right? Because I wanna give you all a little bit of information, okay? Uh, this is a link for the Google Forms. And what I'll do, I'll ask Leanne to also put the link in Facebook for y'all, so y'all could go and enter. Now, what we'll ask you, we will ask you for email and so on, but there is a box to say, if you don't want any more contact from us other than that, you can click that box and we will not. One second. You can click the box. Oh, let's go back. We can click the box. You can click the box that says, don't contact me anymore. I don't want to hear from you. That's okay. Okay. Click that box and we, you know, you will just have entered the contest and that's it. And it will be a random winner, winner who will be chosen. What you will win would be a copy of the book. Okay. Which is this book here, Art and Craft Elementary School. And you will also win a created craft box. That craft box is called the Handy Dandy Craft Box. And with that craft box and your recyclables, you can make every single craft in this book. Okay, so yes, you can. Uh, we put together everything you needed to purchase in order to make the items. And we put all of that into a box. Other than that, you need recyclables. You may need tin cans, you may need cereal boxes and things like that. And we give you a list of those things in the book. Um, it's all here for you in terms of, you know, some of the things that you need and, you know, everything is in pictures, okay? The second thing I want to share with you, and again, if you have questions, please feel free, now is the time to ask. Um, again, you can find us, this is our YouTube address, our Pinterest address, our Facebook address, which is on facebook.com backslash DIY place. And you can also email create at diyplace.org and we will get all of that information from you. Whatever questions that you have for us, uh, that's what you know we're gonna try and answer. Okay, so where am I? It's we have a few minutes to do some QA. Leanne, I'm going to stop share now. And Leanne is back on with us. Yes. So before we get to our Q&A, Camille, I feel like we needed to discuss a little more about how that cute caterpillar, which I hope you could be able to show us, um, how that could be used in a classroom setting. Because mm -hmm. I know when we had our discussion, you know, we unpacked this a lot. And I think yes. we wanted to just let teachers know, because, you know, oftentimes I agree with you, you know, you see the craft being kind of like, you know, the Friday afternoon or after the fact or maybe a project being sent home but i think i really want to unpack like what a lesson could look like with norman <laughs> the caterpillar um just some of our discussions like how and of course oh so i'm seeing in the chat um is saying isabella the caterpillar looks lovely so she's isabella. Like, well we're going um, to I think she may be speaking about it as Kizzy, we need to see proof of that, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Send us the picture. laughs> All right. Um, that, so I just wanted to discuss like some of the ideas that would have come out of the top of my mind, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of how we can use the caterpillar. And of course, you know, just that whole metamorphosis process, you know, my children are actually looking at life cycles right now. And I can imagine where they actually get to create the different parts, maybe then go on to create a butterfly. But even as a, a secondary school teacher, I could see this when we talk about like self-esteem and you know, you talk about change, like for standard five entering into the secondary mm -hmm. school, you know, where change is it, it's a little scary. But yeah. you want to tell them, you know, that change could be beautiful too, just like the caterpillar changes into the butterfly. So I could really see this being not just, you know, you're doing craft while it's fun and all of that, but you could really pack a whole lesson 
into it. And then, of course, creativity, innovation. I mean, I feel like we could have a full lesson just on Norman or Isabella, yeah. the caterpillar. <laughs> and I think you had mentioned um, insects. Yes. Insects as well. So that's another one as well that you could talk in the animal kingdom. Correct. Vertebrate, invertebrate, prey and predator. I mean, and this mm -hmm. is just on one crafty. And so, I mean, if all of you all have like other ideas, of course, feel free to share with us. Um, this live is available after it ends. So, of course, you can share with your friends as well. And you also continue commenting even after the live. Um, but I really do see the value of what was done today. And I, I want people to take away it's not just for little ones. It is for everybody, you know, secondary school students, even at the tertiary level. I am sure there are adults who would appreciate learning a lesson and actually benefit <laughs> from, from, from this, you know. So. You know, craft is something also I should have mentioned because we're in this stressful period, I mean, today alone, yeah. uh, but we're in a stressful period of COVID and you know, having kids do craft, it helps to relieve stress. That is something that is scientifically proven, you know? So it's something as well that helps them to reduce stress. So it's something that I definitely recommend you incorporate in your teaching. Like I said, you can go on, we have all the videos on YouTube. So you don't even have to be a crafter yourself. If you're not comfortable, that's okay. I'm doing the teaching, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and it's less than five minutes. So you're not gonna pick up your whole class with the video. You know, the video is gonna be very short um, and you can use it now to teach the kids to do little things like that, that you use in curriculum. And, you know, the little faces, they come alive when they do these things, you know, they feel school is fun. <laughs> and somebody is sharing now that, you know, she can use it to teach colors for secondary school. So she said her caterpillar may be longer. Yes. Know, yes. Colors. And, move. Also... and move, you know, because if it's longer, you can actually move it. Yes. You know, so. And I'm sure they will have lots of fun. Another um, hemorrhagy also suggested that it could be used to teach sequencing. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And, yes. And I said sequencing, I'm actually thinking it might be a fun way to teach like multiplication. So, you know, that whole skip counting thing, you can actually skip the different, um, you know, skip the mm -hmm. road. Four, six. So I'm seeing, I mean, and this is just one craft. I'm pretty sure yeah. if we went back to so, you know, one, Leanne, one of the things that um that that I do is is well, it's coming in volume two. We're doing a binary coded bracelet, but binary coding is so very important to understand now because uh, children have to learn code coding, you know, and um as you talked about sequencing and the colors for some of the older kids, they can even do a binary coded caterpillar right. with the different colors, each color representing a different binary code. So, I mean, some really lovely ideas and, you know, well, we are wrapping up. I'm seeing comments, not um, questions. So <laughs> some people uh, suggested that this could be used in ELA, um, language arts, science class, right? Um, well, of course, foreign languages. I mean, I think you could probably find a use for this in any subject area at any level, right? Um, Elizabeth mentioned she used to do a lot of it when she was face-to-face. -face. Now she does, she uses a lot more of these video tutorials. Mm -hmm. And of course you can go on and check out their YouTube channel, check out their Facebook page. And of course you can actually contact Camille, right? At, um, yes, create a DIY place. She shared and so, she, who knows, maybe you can get us to come. I mean, I'm throwing her in the spotlight here, but <laughs> get us to come to your school and, and do some projects. All right. So to a few schools. Don't forget to enter the contest. Yes. Right. I will put the Google link in the Facebook chat. So you all have until what, midnight tonight, Leanne? How long does it do we normally yeah, go with? Until them? tomorrow. So anybody. Until tomorrow. Yeah. And we will okay, announce so it. midnight tomorrow night, Trinidad time, you have until that to enter. But I suggest you just go and do it now so you don't forget. Correct. <laughs> and um, just mentioning, we did have not only um, Trinidad and uh, educators from Trinidad and Tobago, we had people viewing from as far as Pakistan. So <laughs> Nice, nice. Welcome, yes. Pakistan. Yes. 
So we're going to wrap up here and we will see you. Please leave your comments. Let us know um, if you would like probably a second part where we look at something specific. And remember to check out Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, DIY Place for all of the information that was shared today. Yes, Camille. One other push I want to say is that on our Facebook page now on Friday evening, first Friday of every month, so the next one will be the fourth, we are doing Facebook Lives. And they are not necessarily always for children. Sometimes we do part for children. But in fact, this coming uh, next week, Friday, we're going to be doing mostly for adults. So just come join, have some fun. Just like you saw me make the caterpillar, I'm going to be making a set of different things. And just come and relax and have fun with us. Yes. Sounds like a plan. And to our 21st century educators, we will be having our next uh, session on Genially, how to create those games using Genially on March 3rd. So look out for it. And we will see you. So thank you for staying with us. And bye-bye. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Leanne. Bye, everybody. Awesome. <laughs>